When it comes to throwaway characters being introduced in the Scream franchise, it comes as no surprise that in a set of movies that focuses killing people off frequently, there is no shortage. One of the often perceived throwaway characters actually had a huge amount of depth and character development. This character existed in Scream 6 in the form of Jason Kirby. Initially perceived as a ghost face, the character took the audience on a very brief journey of what life was like being a serial killer hidden within plain sight. Jason's shared flat, however, featured some interesting details that fans often overlook and demonstrated just how dark and twisted the character really was. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest installment of Beyond the Mask. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Jason Kirby, his impact and his brief scenes and taking a deep dive to showcase various aspects of his flat that contained a lot of dark hidden details. We've been introduced to a lot of serial killers throughout the six screen movies, but the inclusion of seeing a killer function actively around the heroes of the story is something that hasn't been done before. For the most part, most killers are supportive of the hero, with the audience never really knowing what's going on behind closed doors until the end of the movie. Jason Kirby changed that dynamic somewhat. The audience went on a journey with him before he was eventually killed, a journey that isn't documented often in the Scream universe. During his phone conversation with Ghostface, Jason highlighted just how unstable he was. His comparison of his victim Laura being just like meat is a trope often used by killers who are describing how it feels to kill someone. Jason's desire to kill likely became stirred up by his love of the Stab franchise. His love for those movies and his desire to follow in the footsteps of those who came before only added to his dark nature. One of the darkest aspects of the opening scene is featured in a throwaway line used by Jason. When he provides an excuse for why he killed Laura, he states it's due to having blue balls indicating that he and his roommate Greg may have killed before. What's more, a camera is situated inside their home, possibly hinting that the pair planned on showcasing their murders inside their dorm flat in some sick, twisted homemade video. Jason's relationship with Greg isn't overly clear on screen, however they hide within plain sight at Blackmore University, seeming like typical nerds who love horror movies. Unknown to the people around them, the pair have a shrine dedicated to worshipping Ghostface inside a locked closet within their flat. Their home served as a location for them to hide their dark deeds. In one particular shot of the refrigerator, we can see a young girl with a striking resemblance to Casey Becker. Located beside her picture is another photo from within their flat of a camera setup. Jason and Greg seem somewhat solitude in their living standards which is why a photo of a young girl on their fridge likely points towards something far more darker. Possibly a victim they've practiced their killings on. Her resemblance to Casey Becker is what makes the character so striking, and given their love for Stab, it's obvious to me this girl was one of their victims before the movie begun. Jason and Greg's murderous antics likely led to their involvement in targeting Sam Carpenter online. The posts, scattered all over social media, were initiated by Quinn. However, Greg was a major contributor to those posts, as highlighted on the computer screen, which was still on following Jason's return to the flat. It's unclear how many murders the pair had committed before their eventual deaths. However, their plans were to continue Richie Kirsch's story by murdering Sam and Tara Carpenter. How they intended on carrying that out remains a mystery. It's my personal belief, however, it likely would have involved the pair being murdered at the Halloween frat party they attended, or back at their home, where cameras were already set up in preparation for the murders that were to come. Thankfully, Jason and Greg's intended killing spree was stopped, but only to make way for a more sinister evil to take their place. If you enjoyed today's episode of Beyond the Mask and would like to continue to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to drop a like as well. I'm going to be exploring more killers from the franchise, so if you'd like to see some origin stories for other killers, be sure to tell me who you'd like to see next. Thank you for watching, and always remember, who gives a fuck about movies?